Three Pillars of Shrimp Keeping for Beginners, Episode 2, Quality Shrimp. I believe there are three main pillars in successful shrimp keeping and breeding. In this video, we'll discuss the next one, Quality Shrimp. Hey there, Ray here, your go-to guide for all things aquatic on RW Aquarium pages. Whether you're a loyal subscriber swimming back for more, or a brand new friend just diving into our underwater world, a warm welcome to you. Get ready to join me on an exciting journey through the lush aquascapes of planted aquariums, the bustling life of shrimp tanks, and every watery wonder in between. We're about to deep dive into the aquatic adventure together. With over 20 plus years of experience in keeping and breeding shrimp, I am currently running 26 aquariums with 20 plus different types of shrimp. In my theory, there are three main pillars of successful shrimp keeping. There are one, water parameters within range, two, quality shrimp, and three, patience. We'll be talking about the second one in this video, quality shrimp, but do check the other videos on water parameters and patience. And those are the two of the three other pillars. Quality shrimp matters. Unless you're living in Asia where the shrimp are naturally living, most of the shrimp that is from Europe or America is imported at one point or another. There's nothing wrong with imported shrimp, but there are many different quality of shrimp. In most cases I've seen, fish stores import cheap shrimp, whereas instead of the quality shrimp, isn't as good as locally bred. There's a few reasons for this, but mostly profitability, cost, and sustainability business-wise. Looking at the price list for cheaper imported neocaridina shrimp, for example the cherry shrimp, they're about 10 cents each, add-on shipping, dead on arrivals, import fees, import certificates, and it adds up to a few dollars, but it's still pretty cheap but you'll need to buy them in bags of 50 to 100, which most hobbyists like myself only need 10 to 25 of them. Buying these cheap imported shrimp allows fish stores to lower their cost and gain the most profit. Cheaper imported shrimp are grown in semi-dirty ponds outdoors and sometimes, many times, they're full of diseases. I did a recent test to validate my previous experiences. I imported a bag of 100 imported cheap shrimp. A few things that I've noticed, there were a few deaths as travel is about 3 days from Asia. They were jam packed in bags of 50s in each bag. After introducing them into a separate tank, I noticed many of them had diseases such as green fungus, so I had to treat for that which adds to the cost and causes mental stress when the shrimp are sick. When they did breed for me, there were a lot of inconsistent colors and as a result lots of coals. There were also adult sized shrimp, not juvenile as I typically recommend and they don't adapt well to new conditions. Adult shrimp can be past their prime breeding age, but in the end, large colorful shrimp do sell more. On the other end of the spectrum, my friend imported some more expensive and higher quality neocaridian shrimp from Taiwan and from a reputable breeder. The quality was much better, they came in as juvenile with full colors already, and the babies from these shrimps had very few coals, so the quality does matter. The other alternative is locally bred shrimp, where sometimes it's passionate breeders with high quality shrimp that was imported before. Sometimes you might get some local breeders with poor quality shrimp, for example, coals. So it's very important to do your research and to ask others for feedback about that breeder's shrimp. Ask for photos and videos of the colony and the shrimp that you're receiving and inspect them before accepting them if it's local pickup. If it's shipped from other parts of the country, then ask for photos and videos. I made a video about few unethical breeders who sold me 20 males and 0 females, a little bit disappointed in these breeders for sure. 
Locally bred shrimp are also adapted to your local water, which might have some trace elements that the shrimp are used to. It's hard to explain this theory as you'll need extensive water analysis and ICP test to test out all the elements inside the water. To summarize, quality shrimp does matter. And in terms of young juvenile that's in their prime breeding age or less cull that passes on to the next generation. But with all this said, some people aren't into breeding shrimp and want to keep some shrimp in the aquarium ecosystem, but I still recommend quality shrimp. Here's a pro tip. Sometimes local breeders have too many of one type of shrimp and will sell them at a much discounted price, similar to what I'm doing with my orange eye yellow King Kong shrimp. So it's okay to ask around. Quality shrimp does cost a bit more and it really depends on your budget. I don't recommend buying pears, but purchasing 10 to 25 shrimp in a 5 or 10 gallon aquarium would be best. In the next video in this series, we'll be talking about the third pillar, patience, a very deep topic. Have you ever purchased cheaper quality shrimp and had issues with them, or were they all perfectly fine? I'm interested to hear about your experiences with them. I absolutely love sharing my experiences, success and failures with everyone. It's just so exciting to document my journey in planted shrimp tanks and to share it with others. Stay tuned for more informative videos as I've got plenty of content in store for you. Thanks for watching and listening to my rambles. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day and happy shrimp keeping.